Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Object Oriented Programming. Today we're going to get to code. We're going to get to code. So I want to show you a little bit about Replit and I also want to go over the couple parts of the program so we can get you started in the Java compiler. So let's get let's get to it. All right. So, uh we're going to go to replit.com. So what you when you go to replit.com, this is what you're going to see. If you haven't already, I would register on replit.com. You can just sign up with your email address and your you create a password. And then once you create a password, you can go to your profile and you can see all the stuff that you have available to you. Now I'm going to create a new so in this site this online compiler it has the ability to create what we what they call REPLs and I'm going to I'm going to get us started on that on the left you see where it says new rep REPL you're going to click on that and then here you're going to see the languages available to you and we're going to click on java and it's going to automatically create a name for you I will usually sometimes leave it there or I will I will replace it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna replace it we're gonna say that this is lecture zero get it index zero and <laughs> sorry I had to put that in there and then uh, because account is free uh, you don't you're gonna it's gonna be public and who cares right it doesn't matter if you do pay for it and which I recommend you do I did I did I'm a faculty member so I do get some free things but I don't have the full-fledged version but this for so far this company is great and I'm not selling anything for them but I found them on the net and I and once I found them their their interface is is, is, is really good and the SLA I'm giving you terms that you don't you're not familiar with, but the, the service that you get from this online compiler is great. So I do recommend that you do get it. And if you have the ability to pay for it, even better, because you're you're gonna be supporting these guys. So you're gonna click on create REPL. I hope I'm saying that right. It's, wait. And great. So now in Java everything is a class and I'm not gonna go into the object oriented just yet I'm just gonna get you familiar with just the, the the first version or template that you get on replit but as you see on the top you have a main.java now you don't have to have this file named main.java it just does it for you but if you were working on a application on your desktop Perhaps you don't want to name it main.java, you may want to name it my first lecture.java. And that's perfectly fine. The one thing I will tell you is that the file name for your Java file has to match the class name. That's just a rule that they have in terms of the Java compiler. Now, every class has a public function called main. And if you remember from my C++ course, you know that the main function is your starting point in an application. And it's no different in Java where you'll have a main function that's going to be your starting point. Now, as you go through the semester and this course, you may have a class that doesn't have a main and that's perfectly okay. The main function is basically the kind of like the master class that will unite everything together in terms of structure of code you can think of it in C++ as your main function but in the second layer to that in Java you're gonna have a main class that you're gonna use to call all your other subclasses again I'm not gonna get too much into the detail because we have yet to learn right but for now in terms of doing the little examples here and things that I'm going to ask of you you're going to have a class with a uh, static void main function or, or what they call um, what, let's call it method okay they call it method 
And this method is static. And we'll talk about what the static word means in, in the coming lectures. Okay, now the one thing that is missing from here as well is the, the method the method modifier. It, it, I'm sorry, it's called the access modifier, which which is identified by public. Now this method is is has a um, an access modifier of public. But as I said, the class itself is missing its access modifier, which which mean there's a whole meaning to the why to what the meaning of that is, and we're gonna go into why why do we mark some methods public, and even some classes public, private, and so on. The other and, and I, again the static, so in in C plus plus I hope you remember what static means, but just a little refresher. Static means, when a method is static, it means that even though it is within this class, it can be accessed without creating an instance of the class called main. Now you're probably asking, well, what's an instance of a class? Well, again, I'm gonna get into this on the next lecture, but I'll give you kind of a rundown just so you can look at the code and you can kind of compare. Um, so an instance of a class means that in memory you're creating a physical representation of the class. It's similar to, I like to use the house example and I read it in some book. I forgot what book it was so I'm sorry if I'm not quoting the book but what what happens with classes in, in any object-oriented ob uh, language is say you have a blueprint to a house, right? So you have a blueprint and the blueprint has four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and has a basement and all that. Now, the blueprint itself, there is no physical representation of it. It's just a blueprint. You can, you can think of that as a class. So your class itself is a blueprint. It, there's no physical representation of it, much like a blueprint of a house. You see a blueprint, it's just a little drawing, has all the things that are, are in the house, but it's just a drawing. And we can relate that example to a class. So whenever we define a class, it's basically we're just creating a blueprint of something that will have some type of behavior and, and actions. When you instantiate an object of a class, now those are those are very very technical terms. What that actually means is that you are physically creating the class in main memory with its properties and methods. And there is physical memory that is taking up this this class, similar to building a house. If you have a blueprint of a house, you still have a class. But then once you have, once the builder actually creates the house with physical wood, then that house is an instance of that blueprint. And again, I use instance, but in terms of classes, the instance of a class, which is going to be an object, is the physical representation of that class in memory using the blueprint that you created or using the class that you created. And we'll get into what actually goes inside a class, such as little properties, getter, setter methods, and then just methods inside a class that you're going to use for any type of behavior and action. And this relationship between a class and an object is what makes an object-oriented programming language um, in terms of a difference between a class and an object. So there is a difference between a class and an object. So a class, yes, it's source code, but until you instantiate an object of that class, it really doesn't exist physically, we can say in memory. 
Now, how do you instantiate an object of a class? Well, that's a Java syntax that we're going to learn. But if you if you look back in C++ and you were or you you were studying pointers, right? Uh, and you were trying to new up an array or, or you would say new int, right? You can think of that relationship there where if you say int something equals new int and then the size of, of an array or it's just a dynamic array that is pretty much what you're doing with with java so in an object oriented language it's not only java but i'm again where this is languages the, the programming language we're using here is java the the instantiation of the class by using new is it tells a compiler, oh, okay, create something physical and create memory space for all the properties and methods that, that we need. Now, let's run this this class real quick. I mean, this, um, this program real quick. Right now, this is not really going to do anything except just print out hello world. And I'll show you what is actually happening here. Let's see if it does print out okay so on the sorry for the motorcycles uh, on the right okay you see that we have the Java C so Java C is a Java compiler right and then you have this class path that we're using on their console okay and then at, towards the end you have something called main.java so what's actually happening here? So there's two steps that are happening in the compilation process. And if you go back to my diagram of the previous lecture, this is what I was talking about with compilation and then linking it at the Java virtual machine. This Java, Java compiler will take your main.java, which is the file we're working on, right? And it's going to compile it and create the bytecode. Once it compiles it and creates the bytecode, that bytecode now needs to be fed into JRE or the JVM, I'm sorry, the Java Virtual Machine. And then the way that we run the program on top of the JVM, we use the, the, the program called Java. We still reference something called the class path and then the name of my file which is just main notice how it's not main dot class remember there's a class file that's created we just use main and then once we did main then that will actually run my program which is hello world for now we're just going to stick to console applications we're not going into any type of graphical user interface applications just for simplicity's sake now, how did I print this hello world? Well, remember how in C++ you use C out? And C out in C++ is an object. Now, and that's why I tell you, I'm going to do a lot of C++ references, so I recommend that you review my, my intro to C++ course on YouTube. But if you remember how we, when we started printing things out to the console, the C out is an object, right? And you use it to print things out we can relate that to this thing here which is called system.out.println which is a this is a method this is a method so print line is a method that is found in this object within the system namespace and by using the print line method, you see how I hover over it? It's actually a method that takes in a parameter or argument. And the argument itself is a string. And what that means is that we're actually calling it and we're able to, whatever string we pass it in, it's going to print it out to the console. Now there's print line, and I believe if I do the IntelliSense dot out dot print test, 
I believe if I do print, this will print stuff out without a new line. So whereas in C++, it was annoying to, you know, trying to shape your stuff together with print line and I mean, uh, end line and all that. It's a little easier with, with Java. Actually, everything's easier with Java. We can print text out on a new line by using print line, or we can just simply print something using print. So if I run this again, notice how on the right it's doing the Java C. So that's going through the Java compiler. And then you see how on the bottom it, it prints out hello world. Sorry, let me just uh, make this here. You print out hello world and then the, the word test, right? And how did I know that I didn't print a new line with test? Well, I know that this cursor is not on the end, which means that there was new, no new line printed. A couple, just to summarize all the points here. So we've gone through a lot, right? And I've kind of bundled everything in, but at least you kind of know where the starting point is. You're always going to have a main class and it doesn't have to be, the name doesn't have to be main, but if you do change the name, the class name must match the name of your file. If I was to change this to Professor Louis, the class Professor Louis, then I would have to change the main to Professor Louis.java. If I was to change this to part time adjunct, then I would have to change this file to part time adjunct.java. That's one. The main itself, the method, it's a void type and the, this isn't what we call an access modifier. Again, we're going to talk about the access modifiers in, in the coming lectures, but for the most part, we are always going to have a public main method. And this main method is something that we use to have the Java application start. So we always start from the main method of, of a, of your, of your class, right? So you have a starter class and then this is the main that where, where it's going to start this in terms of args, we'll go into a lecture for that. So don't worry about that too much. But basically what you do is you have the ability to pass in arguments through the command line. So Replit allows you to have a command line, a way in the command line to, to execute a Java program. And you're able to read parameters off the console and how you read parameters of the console is using the args array. And we'll, we'll do a short example on that as well. And so far we just learned one method of a, of the print stream out class where we can use just print line or print. And this allows us to print a, a string out to the console. Okay. Now, the one thing I did not mention, and again, it's a little different with C++, is that right out of the box, we can use system.out.println and print, but we do have the ability to import libraries, much like C++. And you're going to be doing a lot of importing of libraries in, in Java, because Java it has so many classes that, that are available to you that you're going to need to import all those references on uh, up here. So the way that I would do that, the way that I would do that usually is I would have an import statement here, but you know what the cool thing about Replit is, is that if I, let's say I want to do a hash table. So I'll do hash table, right? See that it just automatically included the namespace for a hash table, which I think it's, it's pretty awesome because that means that I don't have to go and look it up and as to what package it's, it's under. So in Java, this, this is not, this is called, I'm using namespace, but cause I'm from the C sharp world, but this is called a package. And basically it's just a location in the Java compiler of where this hash table class is located. Now, if I wanted to use a hash table again, I would have to include this java.util.hashTable class uh, package. 
and if you were doing this locally, you would have to, you have to probably look it up yourself and then you'd find it somewhere. But with Replit, it'll just include it for you. So that's pretty cool in terms of, of this, um, this, this online compiler. Now, um, on the next video, I'm going to talk about declaring variables and declaring objects and just going through the normal syntax of, of Java. So I hope you join me on the next video and I hope you enjoy this. So I'll see you on the next video.